Coming up on episode 32 of the Keto Camp Podcast, we talk all about how to supercharge your brain. Fasting is a challenge to your brain. Your brain responds to that challenge by activating adaptive stress response pathways that help your brain cope with stress and reduce the risk of disease. It stimulates antioxidant defenses, promotes clearance of molecular garbage, enhances DNA repair, and reduces inflammation. Think about this. In an evolutionary perspective, our hunter and gatherer ancestors would not have survived unless their brain was functioning at a high level when they were hungry. I'm a certified functional health practitioner who's on a mission to educate 1 billion people. I've been obese for most of my life. From rock bottom to the top of the mountain, I am passionate about studying ancient healing strategies like fasting and the ketogenic diet and curating this information on the Keto Camp podcast. My goal is to bring you the thought leaders in this space. My name is Ben Azadi, and I want to thank you for spending part of your day with me. Welcome back to the Keto Camp Podcast, or if this is your first time, welcome to the Keto Camp Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to do a deep dive into brain health. I'm going to share some tactics with you, some tips and some studies on how you could optimize your brain power so you could have more mental clarity, focus, energy, less brain fog, less of the forgetfulness, and you could just be thinking like a rock star be a creative machine and I'm going to talk a little bit about how fasting does that, ketones, and then also specific ingredients that you could have on a daily basis that create something called neurogenesis, which is the creation of new brain cells. So we're going to go deep into that and before we do, I want to just let you know that this episode is sponsored by my favorite olive oil, which is the healthiest keto olive oil, the Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club. I get mine delivered from them on a monthly basis. It's hand-picked from different regions all across the world, Chile, Europe, and they are organic, delicious, high-quality olive oil. And here's how you know if your olive oil is one of the good ones or one of the cheap ones. Do the olive oil test. Grab a tablespoon of it, drink it, and see what it does. If it burns your throat, makes your tongue a little fuzzy, that's a good sign. It is loaded in polyphenols and antioxidants. If it goes down smooth, that's a sign that it is not one of the good ones. Most of the olive oil on the grocery store, on the shelf in the grocery store, is not the good stuff. It's actually toxic, rancid, and could be creating more harm than good. So I know the Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club does it the right way. And if you want to learn more about them and get your first bottle delivered to you for $1, head over to www.ketocampoliveoil.com. Remember, that's camp with the K. I also want to remind you again that I'll be speaking at Low Carb USA in Boca Raton, Florida, January 17th through the 19th, 2020. For Keto Camp listeners, you can get $100 off your ticket price and over 50% off of your room block at the hotel, the Marriott, by heading to www.lowcarbusa.org. And during checkout, put in Keto Camp to get $100 off your ticket price and get that room block. I would love to meet you there. Uh, Let's have a Keto Camp meetup for sure. It's going to be an amazing conference with incredible practitioners, so you don't want to miss this. And by the way, Boca Raton, Florida in January is spectacular. So I'd love to see you there. And the last thing I want to just mention before we get into this episode is that I have a 12-page ebook designed to teach you how to burn fat instead of sugar. It's completely free, and you could grab that over at www.ketokickstartguide.com. Go read that. It'll teach you more about keto and fasting so you're well-equipped to get the results that you want to get to. All right, let's talk all about your brain now. So I don't know if you knew this, but it takes massive amounts of energy, resources, and blood flow to process food, to digest food from the chewing of that food to the digesting of that food from macronutrients to micronutrients. So you have this entire process taking place in the body when you are in a fed state. 
Now let's look at the opposite of a fed state. A fasted state, you have now all this energy, all this resource, all these resources, and this blood flow, but instead of using it for digestion, it's powering your brain. And I'm gonna start there with how your brain power could fire on all cylinders. Practice intermittent fasting. I'm telling you, when I'm fasted like I am right now, having my delicious cup of coffee with some grass-fed ghee and some sea salt, my brain is firing on all cylinders. I get the most done during my fasted state. It almost feels like I have superpowers. Honestly, if you're an entrepreneur listening to this right now and you're not utilizing fasting as a tool to crush your business, you're missing out, you're missing out. And I'm gonna get into the science, but I just wanted to break that down for you. Choose where you want your blood flow to go. If you want it to go towards digestion and away from your brain function, then eat food throughout the day. Eat every two to three hours. Teach your body to be a sugar burner. But if you want to teach your body instead to use that blood flow to power your brain, all the resources to power your brain, to power the task at hand, then intermittent fasting is where it's at. And I got some great information here from Thomas DeLauer, who is an awesome guy. He's in the keto and health space and performance longevity space. He has a great YouTube channel over at Thomas DeLauer. I'll, I'll put a link for his channel in the notes of this podcast. And here are some notes I took from one of his videos I, I watched from him a few years ago on what happens when you're fasting, what happens to the brain function. So here, here we go. Our brain function doesn't decrease when we fast, but our brain energy does. The slowing down of synaptic activity is the brain's way of conserving energy and giving itself a chance to recharge. This means the brain becomes more efficient. For example, if you normally have 100% energy in your brain when you are not fasting, when you are eating a normal diet, it's gonna be diversified through multiple areas of your brain. As far as synaptic energy goes and this whole synaptic process, let's just break it down to 10 different compartments. So you have 10% being directed to 10 different compartments, which equals 100% of your brain power. But here's the deal, when you're fasting, your brain is becoming much more efficient and turning off mechanisms that, that don't need to be used. So even if your overall energy in your brain is now reduced to 50%, well, instead of having 50% diversified into different components, that entire 50% is now being focused on one area at a time, right? That's why you could be much more focused, much more alert when you become fasted. But let's, let's think of this as a ancestral approach. Why is the brain functioning at a more peak level when there's no food coming in? Well, the body is hardwired for the old school. It thinks, oh crap, we are in a famish. We need to be alert in order to catch our next meal, to kill our next meal, to find our prey. And that's exactly what's happening. You see, we're hardwired this way. You wanna be able to be focused and sharp so I would rather have 50% less energy but have all that energy focused at one department than have 100% of energy and have that scattered all over the place. Something else that happens is when we're fasting, we're also not producing nearly as much neurotransmitters. Serotonin, dopamine, these neurotransmitters are important but they are metabolically costly to produce. Right? They, they take a lot of energy to produce this. And a lot of the time, we're producing more than we actually need. So by reducing the release of neurotransmitters from synapses in the brain, like what happens when you're fasting, it kind of gives your nervous system a break. It's also worth noting here that high levels of synaptic activity, overactive synaptic activity, and high levels of neurotransmitter production are also associated with a multitude of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, Huntington's and Parkinson's. Something else that happens is you produce BDNF when you fast and other foods, which I'll get into later, help you produce BDNF and activities. But let's talk about fasting. What is BDNF? BDNF is miracle grow for the brain. I first came across BDNF when I read a book called Exercise and the Brain by John Rattay. And he did, they did a study in Illinois. I believe it was Naperville, Illinois. And there was this one school in Naperville that was achieving the highest grades year after year after year. And the thing about the school, they weren't the most expensive school, the most advanced school, but they were crushing it. These students were crushing it with their grades. They, they set out 
to do its study to figure out what's going on, what's in the drinking water at the school. And it turns out what they had them do was exercise, have PE in the morning before class even started. So they wanted to know what's the link between exercise and brain function. And they determined that when you exercise, your brain is producing this BDNF. And I want you to think of BDNF as brain fertilizer, miracle growth for your brain. The more you produce of it, the more creative you're going to be, the smarter you're going to be, the more focused and driven you're going to be. And that's what's happening to those students. Because when you exercise, by the way, when you're running on a treadmill or outdoors, your, body, your brain is producing BDNF. BDNF helps neurons grow and branch out towards each other, making it easier for neurons to communicate. So when you fast or are in a high level of physical activity, you start producing more of this BDNF. So here's the cool thing. If we're now decreasing the synaptic activity, right? We're decreasing the amount of communication that's going on from neuron to neuron, but we are increasing the key connectivity. We are then increasing the potency of how that activity is communicated. So BDNF is super powerful. And I'm going to share with you a routine you could incorporate on a weekly basis that I got from the book Headstrong from Dave Asprey in a second. But let me just go a little bit deeper into BDNF. BDNF is also an antidepressant activity, which explains why when you're fasting or after exercise, you feel pretty damn good. The combination of BDNF and the decreased activity with the brain ends up being a very powerful feeling. Lastly, BDNF grows this neural connectivity and it grows it in the right areas of the brain. BDNF interacts with neurons in the hippocampus, cortex, and basal forebrain. All of these areas are involved in memory, focused, and overall sense of well-being. BDNF is the reason why you feel so damn good after a tough workout and why the music you listen to on your car ride home from the gym sounds so much better than the car ride going to the gym. Have you ever experienced that? I sure have. So getting back to how you could flood the brain full of BDNF. Well, this entire podcast episode, I'm going to share with you certain ingredients and foods and nutrients that you can do that. Fasting is one of them for sure, and I just shared how. Exercise, but there's a specific exercise you can do, and they're called BDNF sprints. And I always share this when I'm speaking on stage, and I got this from Dave Asprey in his book Headstrong, which I'll put a link for it in the podcast notes. Great book. You want to complete a 400-yard sprint as fast as humanly possible. Pretend like a lion or a tiger, some sort of beast is chasing you and you're just going all out for 400 yards. And if you don't have a measuring stick and you're not sure how long 400 yards is, then I would say about two minutes. Two minutes all-out effort of sprinting. And then immediately you're going to lie down on your back and rest for 90 seconds. You're going to just take deep breaths, pushing your belly out as you inhale and then exhale, pushing your belly in. What's happening here is during the sprint, you are activating your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight nervous system. And then when you're lying down, taking those deep breaths, belly out, you're activating your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the opposite, the rest and digest nervous system. When you go back and forth like that, The brain is flooded with BDNF. And if you complete two rounds of this, so you do it back to back, maybe two or three times a week, you're going to notice a significant increase in your brain function and mental clarity. You're going to start remembering people's names. Brain fog is going to go away. And if you do this in the fasted state, even better. So a lot of my entrepreneurial clients that I coach one-on-one to take their performance and business to another level I incorporate this in their action plan. I tell them, hey, I want you to do this, these BDNF sprints two to three times a week. And I tell you what, when you're done with it, because it's not fun during, it's, it's very challenging, but when you're done with it, you're supercharged. So the next time you have a big day, a big event, maybe you have a big sales call or a big presentation or you're being interviewed or you're interviewing somebody, whatever it is, you have a big day coming up, do these BDNF sprints in the morning and you are gonna be on your A game. All right, the next tip here is get into ketosis. I've spoke about this several times, but ketones are a powerful way to fuel the brain. The brain is about 70 to 80% fat. It loves fat, so when you're eating high quality fat, you're giving your brain and your cells what it desires, and 25% of the body's total cholesterol is found within the brain. The brain is an energy sucker, It sucks up a lot of energy, even though it's only a small percentage of the body, it sucks up a lot of energy. And guess what? 
ketones provide the brain three times more energy than glucose. That's why when, when you were a baby and getting breastfed from your mother, if you did get breastfed, you were producing ketones. Most babies produce ketones because breast milk has saturated fat, cholesterol, and protein. It helps the development of the brain. Something to consider here is that beta-hydroxybutyrate, it floats around in your blood and it could cross different important barriers to be able to be turned into energy at all times, making ketones a valuable source of energy. It's the main energy that we are talking about when anybody references ketosis or fasting, beta-hydroxybutyrate, which we'll call BHB. BHB has the ability to be a direct source of fuel for the mitochondria. So in the case of the brain, it looks something like this. Your brain is encapsulated with something that is known as the blood-brain barrier. It is a tightly regulated mechanism that doesn't allow much into the brain. The brain is the focal point of your entire life. It needs to be protected. So the whole idea of the blood-brain barrier is to protect it so that things cannot get in. This means a lot of the enzymes don't get in. Inflammatory cytokines don't get in. A lot of nutrients don't get in. But beta-hydroxybutyrate, the ketone body that is produced when you are fasting, is so hydrophilic that it has the ability to cross the blood-brain barrier and be used as a fuel source. So it crosses through the brain, then it crosses through the mitochondria, and then it creates what is called acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is then turned into ATP, which is the gasoline of your cells. All this means is that BHB crosses the brain, gets into our energy powerhouses, and it creates energy in the brain much more efficiently. As you can see, all of these things combined together end up creating a nice trifecta for the brain to have the most efficient source of energy possible. BHB stimulates something called mitochondrial biogenesis. This is the process of new mitochondria which are formed inside the cells. So you don't just have more efficient mitochondria, you have the multiplication of new mitochondria that are making you more efficient, making your brain more efficient. Let's stay on this topic of, of why fasting bolsters brain power. There's a great TEDx talk given by Mark Matson, the current chief of the Laboratory of Neuroscience at the National Institute of Aging. He is also a professor of neuroscience at the Johns Hopkins University and one of the foremost researchers of the cellular and me molecular mechanisms underlying multiple neurodegenerative diseases and disorders such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. And he has an amazing TEDx talk, which I'll put in the notes. Here's what he says. Here's from his research. Fasting is a challenge to your brain. Your brain responds to that challenge by activating adaptive stress response pathways that help your brain cope with stress and reduce the risk of disease. It stimulates antioxidant defenses, promotes clearance of molecular garbage, enhances DNA repair, and reduces inflammation. Think about this. In an evolutionary perspective, our hunter and gatherer ancestors would not have survived unless their brain was functioning at a high level when they were hungry. And then he goes on to share that studies are showing the increase in energy production, mitochondria in the brain cells. And I just spoke about that. And there was a study that showed this. It showed that the more you fast, the more mitochondria that's produced in the brain. And I'll put that study from cell.com in the podcast notes so you could read it. All right, so let's get into the process of neurogenesis. I touched upon it. Neurogenesis is the making of new brain cells. It turns out we continue to create this process throughout our entire lives. The rate of neurogenesis determines how well we will function on a daily basis. So the billion dollar question is, how do we increase our rate of neurogenesis? Well, I just share with you three powerful ways to do so. Exercise, fasting, and ketones. Now, I'm going to get into specific ingredients that you could have on a daily basis to give you even more firepower within the brain. For most people, the rate of neurogenesis decreases by the ages of 30 to 35. In many people, it dramatically decreases by the age 40, 50, and 60. There are noticeable mental effects. When neurogenesis drops, quality of life goes downhill quickly. Along with reduced neurogenesis, we see things as memory loss, chronic stress, anxiety and fear, cognitive impairment, depression, loss of emotional resilience, trauma, diminished executive function, loss of vitality, dementia, uh, yikes, a lot of bad things here. 
your rate of neurogenesis is a key indicator of life. It turns out that stress can actually kill neurons in the hippocampus. When neurogenesis is high in this portion of the hippocampus, a person has strong emotional resources to deal with stress, fear, anxiety, loneliness, and depression-inducing events. But when the neurogenesis is low in this portion, it's the exact opposite. Creating neurogenesis in your hippocampus turns you into a bulletproof human being who can deal with anything at any time. And I'm going to teach you how to do this, but here are some top ways to decrease stress before I get into the exact nutrients to take on a daily basis. Meditation. The overall size of the entire hippocampus is impacted by spiritual practices such as meditation. With spiritual practice, the entire length of the hippocampus enlarges. There's two great apps you can use for meditation, Headspace and Oak, that uh, I believe they're both free. And if you just get into the habit of that, it's going to really help with stress in your life. I personally follow Dr. Joe Dispenza's guided meditation. You could find his meditations over at drjoedispenza.com. Let's get into some of the key ingredients that research shows. If you consume these on a daily basis, it will increase your production of neurogenesis. A lot of this research comes from a great book, The Neurogenesis Diet and Lifestyle, Upgrade Your Brain, Upgrade Your Life by Brant Courtright. Number one, my favorite keto fruit, which I made videos about, blueberries. I have blueberries just about every single day and I recommend it to my clients. Not only is blueberry low in sugar compared to other fruits, it's packed full of antioxidants. Blueberries act in so many ways to promote neurogenesis and protect the brain from cognitive decline. I know what you're thinking right now. Ben, you teach keto. Blueberries and fruit are not keto. Well, here's the deal. It depends on where you are along your keto journey. If you have insulin resistance, if you have a lot of weight to lose, you got to limit your fruit until you fix that, fix your metabolism. But if you have achieved metabolic flexibility, what I have achieved and what I teach on my YouTube channel, on this podcast, then you have more flexibility to have these fruits. And blueberries should be one of these fruits. Numerous studies show adding blueberries to the daily diet of mice increased neurogenesis significantly. And I have study after study here that I'm looking at, and I'll put it in the podcast notes if you want to be, if you want to geek out like myself. Consuming about one cup per day is the equivalent human portion that animal studies have suggested. And here's a bonus tip for you. Have your blueberries frozen. Okay, according to the South Dakota State University, when you have frozen, they, be- they deliver a bigger dose of disease-fighting antioxidants than fresh. These antioxidants come from the compounds called anthocyanins, which give blueberries their purple hue. So the ice crystals that form when the berries are frozen disrupt the structure of the plant tissue and make these anthocyanins more available. The anthocyanine dye, which causes that dark blue color, crosses the blood-brain barrier to stimulate neurogenesis. A study showed humans with cognitive decline showed improvements after consuming berries daily. Aside from increasing neurogenesis, blueberries allow for better communication among neurons, something called signal transduction. Studies also show that blueberry extracts are just as effective as fresh blueberries. In animal studies, it's actually the extract that is used. This makes daily blueberry intake possible for those who don't have access to fresh blueberries or those of you who don't want to get out of ketosis. I'll put a link for the one that I enjoy in the podcast notes. A final tip on blueberries is add olive oil, real olive oil to your blueberries. It will help you absorb even more of the antioxidants, up to 20% more. And again, this show is sponsored by Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club. That's what I put on my blueberries, on my frozen blueberries. And you could get my favorite olive oil over at www.ketocampoliveoil.com. All right, the second nutrient here that helps boost neurogenesis is omega-3 fats. This is another neurogenesis superstar, the complex of omega-3 fatty acids that's found in abundance in cold water fish, wild Alaskan salmon, coho, sockeye salmon, black cod, sablefish, sardines, and herrings. Omega-3s have been shown to dramatically increase neurogenesis, and BDNF levels. Neuroscience researcher Sandrine Thuruff, who is a PhD out of London's King College, reported a 40% increase in neurogenesis by adding omega-3s in their diet. 
Other studies have shown impressive results in neurogenesis, elevated BDNF levels, increase in brain size, and neuroproductive benefits from omega-3s. Why is this happening? Well, I mentioned the brain is mostly fat. And this is where the term fathead came from. If somebody calls you a fathead, say thank you. So when you consume high quality fat, healthy keto, you are continuously rebuilding your brain's cellular structure. So healthy fats are crucial to health and longevity, especially brain health. That's why I love keto, not only for the ketones, but the healthy fats that you're going to be getting from your keto diet. All right, the third item on my list here is green tea. Green tea contains polyphenols, the most powerful of which is EGCG, which stands for epigallocatechin gallate. Green tea's polyphenols have been shown to increase neurogenesis and BDNF levels. Also, research shows it has strong health benefits ranging from cancer prevention to fat loss plus cardiovascular benefits. Also, immunity improvement and glucose reduction. So here's a tip for you. Before your fasted BDNF sprints, have your green tea. I like Peak. I'll put a link for Peak in the notes, and I also like Yogi. Green tea has clear cognitive benefits and even improves working memory, which is one of the most difficult functions to increase. Just keep in mind that most green tea has caffeine, so ideally you want to have it before 2 p.m., have a curfew. All right, the last item on my list here that has been proven to increase new brain function, new brain cells, is curcumin. Curcumin provides the yellow color in the curry spice turmeric. It has a strong neurogenic effect. In addition to its powerful anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effect, aging populations who consume curcumin show better cognitive performance. And I'll put that study in the notes. Curcumin is notoriously known to be poorly absorbed. So you got to keep that in mind. You got to increase the absorption by adding fat to it and or piperin, a black pepper extract. So now you know, now you understand the specific ingredients that help with brain function. Now on the flip side of things, I'm going to share with you the items to avoid that deteriorate your brain. Let's start with the unhealthy fats. These vegetable oils are causing your brain to dysfunction. Make it a priority to avoid liquid death vegetable oils such as corn oil, soy oil, safflower oil, cottonseed oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, all of these, and, and also trans fats like margarine and fake butters and processed packaged foods, these oils oxidize at low levels of heat, and they're oxidized before you even heat them, by the way. And these oils cause, cause chronic inflammation, which dramatically slows down neurogenesis, decreases BDNF. One way chronic inflammation speeds aging up is by clogging, weakening, and stiffening blood vessels. A healthy brain needs a healthy blood supply but chronic inflammation chews up the insides of our blood vessels, compromising this needed blood flow. Chronic inflammation also attacks neurons and damages the brain directly. This is why if I have the choice between smoking a cigarette each day or eating cooked vegetable oils, I would smoke the cigarette. All right, I'm not promoting cigarette smoking, and I've mentioned this before, but if you just look at the stats, what percentage, what are the chances of somebody getting cancer if they smoke two packs of cigarettes every day for 20 years? It's 16%. Now, what are the chances of somebody getting cancer or heart disease if they had vegetable oils every single day for 20 years? Up to 85%. Big difference. Big, big difference. So we want to make sure we're avoiding these toxic, rancid seed oils. We also want to limit or avoid completely conventional grain-fed meat, eggs, and dairy. This stuff is not good. Next on the list is high sugar, high carbohydrate rich foods. This might not be relevant to you since if you're listening to this, you're following a low sugar, low carbohydrate, high fat keto diet. But here's the deal. Higher glucose levels are associated with cognitive decline as we age and also brain shrinkage. Excess carbohydrates, especially sugar and flour, cause insulin to signal to the body to store this excess by converting it to fat, which in turn decreases neurogenesis as well as being associated with, late, with lower brain volume. High normal blood sugar is associated with decreased brain volume and cognitive performance in the 60s. This is bad news. High sugar reduces neurogenesis sharply, and even high normal blood sugar levels are linked to smaller brain volume, especially in the hippocampus, 
less gray matter, and cognitive decline in those over 60. This is one of many reasons why eating a diet rich in healthy fats is important because fat doesn't elevate insulin, doesn't elevate blood sugar the way carbohydrates and sugar does. You also want to limit frying, grilling, and roasting as they all produce glycation and glycotoxins, which are advanced aging products. Low temperature is always better for brain health. Poaching, steaming, baking at low temperatures is how to cook. And the last thing here on my list, and you're not going to like this, alcohol. Alcohol, even in moderation, has been shown to reduce neurogenesis by 40%. This is huge. Alcohol also decreases BDNF levels, so it's a wise decision to limit or stop drinking altogether. I personally don't drink. I haven't had a sip of alcohol in over two years, almost three years now. So I'm going to leave you with foods and nutrients that increase BDNF that the research shows it also cre increases uh, neurogenesis. And you can find a lot of this research in the book, The Neurogenesis Diet and Lifestyle. Magnesium 3 and 8, which I take before bed. Beta alanine, L-carnosine, Vitamin D, alpha lipoic acid, ALA, ashwagandha, resveratrol, cacao flavonoids and dark chocolate, milk thistle extract, huperzine A, phosphatidylserine, and cinnamon. All these ingredients help stimulate neurogenesis. So you have an arsenal of information here. You're probably going to have to go back and listen to this a couple times, especially if you were driving while you're listening to this because you got to take notes here. And start adding these ingredients, these supplements, into your daily lifestyle along with fasting, along with keto, along with exercise. And you're going to notice that your brain is supercharged. And when your brain is supercharged, there is no problem that could come your way that you cannot handle. On the flip side of it, when your brain is dysfunctioning, the smallest problem takes you overboard. So I really hope that you got a lot from this episode I had fun sharing it with you. If this was helpful, I would really appreciate if you took a few seconds to leave the Keto Camp Podcast a rating review on Apple Podcast, iTunes. It makes a big difference for this show and it'll help this information get out there into the world. If you are not subscribed to this podcast, make sure you subscribe. Also, the Keto Camp YouTube channel is very active. We are releasing five brand new videos on that channel every single week. So head over to youtube.com slash keto camp and subscribe and hit the bell. I do go live on the keto camp YouTube channel every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So if you want to hop on there live with me and ask me questions, I would love that. I want to thank you so much for listening to this entire episode through. Make sure you take a screenshot of this episode and share it on your Instagram story, Instagram profile, whatever you choose. And tag me in it. My, my Instagram handle is at the Benazadi, T H E B E N A Z A D I. And I'll make sure I share that on my story and we get some people following you back. Also, use the hashtag Keto Camp. That's Camp with the K. Thanks again for listening to this entire episode. You will hear me on the next episode. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Benazadi, disclaim responsibility from any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own. And this podcast does not accept responsibility of statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or non-direct interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.